welcome to or back to my channel. My name is Annie and today I'm going to be talking about all of the books that I read in January. I had three five stars, which is really good. I had four four stars and two two stars. So a bit of variety there, but mostly I had a really good reading month, which I'm glad about because you know, it's the first month of the year and I wanted to be happy with what I was reading. Also, I'm so sorry, I can't find a chair in this apartment that does not creak. So if you hear some creaking noises, that's why and I wish I could fix it, but I really, I am at a loss. I'm just gonna go through these in the order that I read them. So the first book that I read in 2024 was actually a short story on the tour website which i think they've changed the name of it recently but yeah you can read it for free on the tour website and it's called the night sun by zen e rockland so this is a short story about a woman and her partner and they are really not getting along um they're married they're on the verge of divorce and they are going out to this cabin in the woods as like a last ditch effort to kind of save their marriage and see if they can work on things. And on their way there, they hit a deer and that's kind of the beginning of this story. Massive trigger warning for domestic abuse. Um, the relationship is really unhealthy and it is explored a bit. I don't wanna to say too much about the rest of the plot because it's such a short story but I liked it for the most part. There were some parts which were confusing to me and I don't think that they were actually confusing on purpose. Like, I think that the writing, like things would be worded in a place that, like things would be worded in a way that I found unclear and it didn't seem like an intentional thing that the author was doing. So in that sense, like, I don't know how I felt about the writing 100%. I did really like where the story went and the messages it had. And I was really intrigued while I was reading it. I had like a good time reading it, except for being confused and annoyed by that. But I just, honestly, I don't ever think about it. I don't remember much of it. I do remember what happened, but it's not the kind of thing I'm gonna really think much about in the future. So that is The Night Sun. I would still recommend if you're looking for a good short story because I know lots of people really like it. Or actually, I don't know about lots of people. Gavin recommended it from Gavin Reads It All. Um, and I thought I would check it out since it was just free online. I gave that one four stars, but like a low, low four. The next book I read was The Southern Book Club. The next book I read was The Southern Book Club. The next book I read was The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I love this. This was my first Grady Hendrix book. Um, and Grady Hendrix is known for writing sort of like comedy horrors, which I love watching horror comedies like as films. Um, so it would make sense that I would like his books. But I actually had tried to start this book on audio uh, maybe a year ago and gave up. I don't know why now because I really, really enjoyed this book on my kind of second go of it. And I was also listening to it on audio this time and I would really recommend it. I think I must just have not been in the mood. And I think also at the beginning of the book, you're introduced to this whole book club and I was finding it really hard to keep track of the characters. On my second lesson, I didn't have that same issue, but that was kind of where I was coming from. But anyway, I don't usually give things like DNF a second chance. And I just kept hearing how good this book was and especially how good the audiobook was. And I was like, ah, maybe I'll give it a bit more of a try. And I had so much fun. So basically the Southern Book Club's guide to slaying vampires is about this woman named Patricia. She joins this book club in the deep south in, I think it's like the 70s or 80s. Basically the characters start out in this other book club 
and then they leave to start their own because they're like all the books we're reading for this book club are so boring so they leave and they start to read like commercial fiction um specifically true crime and like books about serial killers and stuff like that which they find a lot more interesting but they're not as like socially acceptable type of thing like there's this big um idea that the women want to seem like they're really intellectual and they're reading books about i don't know like historical novels or classics and they just have so much more fun reading these other books i wish i had read some of the books that the book club had read but i really liked how you go through and like i think each part is named after a different book that they read in the book club which was really fun and it's also just fun to read about characters who love reading basically patricia is our main character and she's in this book club and she's having a good time and then this guy moves to town that she starts to be suspicious of and she begins to kind of suspect that he might not be human and we go from there and this book was just so good i loved seeing all the relationships between the different women some of them were a bit complicated and you know they live in this society that manners and acting like a good wife are everything to them and there's very specific social codes about what you should and shouldn't do and the woman at different points in the novel push back against sort of stereotypes in different ways but it's not all plain sailing and I just really liked it I also I don't know why but for some reason I wasn't expecting this to be as disturbing or scary as it was I kind of like forgot that it was horror and then things would happen and I was like oh okay well that was intense and i did actually really enjoy that stuff there were some scenes that were just so like i had like a visceral reaction i was usually listening to it when i was driving when i was back home um in the u.s and i just the faces i would be making on the road i can only imagine were strange uh because yeah there's a couple of scenes and i really really liked it another thing i really liked was that the book was long but it felt really well paced nothing felt rushed i felt like we got a good amount of time with the characters and so every everyone's actions made sense and you just really would grow to love and care for all these women and i had such a good time i gave this a 4.5 i am really excited to read more of hendrix's work in the future and i'm just so glad that i ended up liking this book because i really wanted to like it for so long so the next two books i read were mockingjay and the ballad of songbirds and snakes by suzanne collins i'm not really going to talk about them much here because I have a whole video that's like a reading vlog of all of the Hunger Games books and then Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. But I'll just say this, Mockingjay, five stars, loved it. I thought it was a perfect end to the series. I cried like a baby because apparently that's all I can do when I read the Hunger Games. But I, it was so good. I liked the ending. It felt really realistic and not overly cheery just for the sake of it, but not depressing to a uh, like to an exorbitant extent so loved mocking jay and then ballad of songbirds and snakes was a really really big disappointment for me this is one of my two star reads of the month i just oh it was maybe i would have liked it more if i hadn't just finished mocking jay but it was a real letdown. One thing that I actually didn't mention in my reading vlog that I did notice straight away when I was reading um, Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes is there's a shift from The Hunger Games, which has first person narration, to Ballad, which has third person limited. And I am usually not too fussed about having a third person narrator. I like it sometimes i also love first person but i don't have as much as a preference as i think some people do 
but the tonal shift as a result of the change in point of view was shocking to me like really surprising i instantly felt a lot just i felt this distance from the character that was very obvious to me and I think as a result, I didn't feel as much like I was in Coriolanus's head as I would have maybe liked to be. I didn't feel like it really grabbed me. And I felt like the book was long, it dragged. I didn't like the pacing. I didn't like the characters, as in I didn't think that we went deeply enough into the different characters. I respect what Susan Collins was trying to do. There was lots of conversations about human nature and philosophy and I thought that was really interesting but overall just did not like it. It wasn't engaging and I was I was bored and I'm really I'm still sad about it. So that was The Lot of Hunger and Snakes. The next book I have to talk about I'm actually so excited to say that I loved and that is The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. This is book two in the Mistborn trilogy and it was five stars. My, so basically I read Mistborn, the first book, um, which is called The Final Empire. I read that a few months ago, maybe in October of last year. And I really, really wanted to like it, but I just didn't end up, it didn't like, it didn't click with me as much as I wanted it to. This is a very beloved series. Sanderson is a super beloved author that I have a lot of respect for. And this is his first series, I believe. I think Mistborn is the first book he released. Don't quote me. But I thought I'd start here because I've wanted to read The Cosmere, which is like his little world of fantasy novels for a while. Sorry if you can hear the construction going on. But yeah, when I read Mistborn, I... <sighs> I just wanted to like it a lot more than I did. I gave it a four, but I think that was actually kind of generous considering the way I was feeling about it. I didn't really like the world. It's set in this very like gray world, ashes falling from the sky. It's an urban setting and I was wanting more high fantasy. I think these are classed as high fantasy, but I was like, I think in a mood for dragons and elves and stuff like that. And I got not that. Which, to be fair, I don't think I was really expecting to get that, but I digress. I just didn't really like it. And I think in retrospect, a big reason for that, well, there's two things. One thing is a lot smaller, like less important, and that is that I didn't buy this one romance that plays a big role in the series. It went from like to love extremely quickly it was insta love it, this is like one of my biggest pet peeves and I just didn't feel like the strength of emotions that the characters reported to be feeling was deserved based on the interactions we had gotten between the two I like both of the characters but I just didn't really see much proof about their relationship and the other thing was that I took way too long to read that book. I was really busy with uni. I was also, I think, in a play at the time. So I barely had any time to read. I ended up reading the first book over the course of maybe a month or two, which is really slow for me. And I think that took away from my enjoyment a lot because I started reading this. I read the first 100 pages or so on my plane back to... LA. Then I took a massive break to read all the Hunger Games books. I picked it back up on my plane back to the UK and over the course of that day I think I read 400 or so pages and I was unsure about it until I think maybe like 200 pages in so it did take me a while but at some point I just became hooked and I think I really really benefited from reading this, like a big chunk of this in a very short period of time. I felt like I was completely immersed in the world in a way that I never was with the first book. And I think that that kind of needs to be my plan for longer books. Otherwise, 
I think my enjoyment of the books will suffer. Sorry, that was kind of a lot about just like how I got into this book. Basically, Mistborn is about this girl named Vin. She lives in the Final Empire, which is basically this world that has like serfdoms. And so there are different kings in different areas and like noblemen that have plantations and stuff like that. And then at the center of the world is this guy called the, Ro the Lord Ruler. And he is basically a god. That's how the people think of him. His rule is absolute. There is this whole class of people called the Ska, which are basically the slaves in this world. They're super beaten down. And Vin is a Ska, but she has lived as a thief in the capital city for years and she's learned not to trust anyone. And then one day she is recruited by this guy named Kelsier, who is another Ska, to join his plot of taking down the Lord Ruler and freeing the Ska in the Final Empire. So she joins this whole crew of Kelsiers and she discovers that she is a Mistborn. Now a Mistborn is basically a person that can burn metals, that's what they call it. I don't know if it's, literally burning but basically you're kind of metabolizing them and they let you do different things and different metals do different things which is basically what i just said for instance let's say one of the metals allows you to push away from things uh another one pulls you towards things so it's like a each metal has kind of an opposite metal and most people that have these sorts of powers are called mistings and they can just manipulate one of these metals. But Mistborn, like Kelsier and Vin, can burn all of the metals and have really, really great powers. So anyway, okay, that is like the basic synopsis of Mistborn and this book, I'm not gonna talk about the plot because that would be spoiling a lot of things. But I'll say some vague things that I liked about it. Number one, there is this siege setting throughout the entire book. This book is like, it's 760 pages. And somehow I was engaged the whole way through. I mean, starting from when I actually became engaged. So I guess most of the way, 500 pages out of that, I was live off loving. I was having so much fun. And the tension that builds throughout the siege is so good it's like this simmering kind of slow build and it never lets up and i didn't feel like it dragged at all because i was always like anticipating what was going to happen next one thing i think probably my favorite thing about this series and the reason why it shines for a lot of people is the characters and the relationships between them this crew that kelsier has brought together are really close their relationships are really lovely they have this like little banter between them and in the first book i just wasn't engaged with them so i was like i don't really care and in the second book i all of a sudden was so attached to everyone there's something i like about all these characters i feel like for the most part they're all really really well developed and fleshed out so they feel real to me like they could be people i know and that is my favorite thing about a book is when the character work is stunning and it is in this. Also the main issue I had with uh, these two characters relationship it's like the main romantic relationship of the book if you know what I'm talking about. All of those issues I had with it were resolved in this basically the two characters that are in this relationship start to have some struggles with their relationship which makes sense and they realize that they might not exactly understand each other. They know each other, but they're not, they don't see eye to eye on a lot of things. And it's a lot of them going back and forth and kind of being like, well, why, why do I care about this person? I know that I do, but what, if I don't understand them, will this be a fulfilling relationship? And I feel like they did a lot of work on the relationship that made me really, really appreciate their relationship a lot more. And I do, ship and I stand them and everything and I really enjoyed that it almost felt like you know in Heartstopper where Nick and Charlie get together and then very 
minor spoiler, but I guess it can be expected from any sort of romance that is spanning over a long period of time. They sort of start to realize like, oh, I have to do other things besides be in a relationship to like have a healthy life. And it felt like the conversations had in like Heartstopper at that stage. And then this book were kind of similar and really progressed the relationship in a way that I loved. I loved it. I am obsessed now. I'm gonna be buying the next book actually tomorrow because I'm going to Waterstones and I don't really have money to spare, but I need the next book ASAP and I'm so excited. The next book I read was actually an essay called Notes on Camp by Susan Sontag. I read this for one of my classes and I was debating including it on this list because usually I don't track on Goodreads essays I read for uni but this is like a separately printed book that you can just buy so I figured I would talk about it here. Um, it is about if you don't know the concept of camp or as Sontag says the sensibility of camp and I'm not gonna try to define camp myself because I feel like there's so much intricacy to it but I did look up a definition. So the Collins Dictionary website says that camp is effeminate or affected in mannerisms, dress, etc. And then the second one, which I think is a better definition, is consciously artificial, exaggerated, vulgar, or mannered, self-parodying, self-parodying, <laughs> especially when in dubious taste. So camp is kind of like when something's so bad, it's good. And it's a lot about artificiality um, and the hyper real. So yeah, it's really cool. I love the concept of camp. I find it so interesting. And this is like the big essay about camp and I didn't like it. And I was in this group actually um, for my seminar where we all had to come to class with like thoughts about it and none of us really liked it. Basically, I felt like Sontag was talking about camp in a way that made it feel very exclusive when I don't think it has to be or is. I think she sort of made it sound like she's in this club that you just could never be in and you could never really fully understand camp. But then at the end, all of a sudden, it's like, well, camp is about love and acceptance. And I'm like, but you just made it seem like you're the expert on all things camp and that it's something that none of the rest of us can actually understand. And also, who made you the authority on camp? So I just didn't really like that. So a big thing about things being camp is it has a lot to do with the queer, queer culture, queer people. Think of people like RuPaul, where they're so over the top and exaggerated. It's very queer and we love to see that. But basically in Sontag's essay, she says that the queer is a big part of camp sensibility. But she also says that queer people, basically if queer people didn't exist, camp would still be a thing. And I'm not really sure I agree with that. I think it's a matter of opinion, but I just, it felt a little bit dismissive of the queer community to me because I don't know how we, we, we would have gotten to the concept of camp without queer people. So yeah, those are some of my thoughts about it. I'm glad I read it, but I just also, I was about to wrap this up, but no, I, I didn't like the format. It's basically just a list. That's why it's called Notes on Camp. It's, it's like a list of all these different things that she thinks about camp and Granted, camp can be a thing that is kind of contradictory in some senses. That's why in the definition it says things are vulgar or mannered, like it encompasses a lot of different things. But it's still not an easy thing to read about, especially when the person writing about it repeats herself so much. There would be like five different little bullet points about the same thing about camp, but like worded differently. Parts of it felt like a little bit of a waste of my time. Anyway, yeah, I was sad that I didn't like it, but I'm glad that I read it in the end, if only because it helped me to articulate my thoughts more on what I think camp 
means. I felt like it was a really interesting essay to look at through a critical lens. Next up, I read Vagina Obscura by Rachel E. Gross, and I found this really good. It was a four star for me, and yeah, I enjoyed it. It's basically a nonfiction about the vagina and how there's parts of it that we haven't explored and how historically scientists don't really pay much attention to women's anatomy because they see it as mystical or too complicated to get into or as a defection sometimes. Like they're just like, well, masculine should be the default. I do talk about this in my 12 hour reading blog, which I should have just posted last week. And you can see more of my thoughts there. I did feel like it was a bit hard for me to understand at some points, but that is purely a me thing. Like I am not sciencey at all. So when she would start to talk about like the hormones do this, and if you can imagine being inside the vagina, you you would go down this pathway and it would lead here. And I was just like, I I know you're trying to paint a mental picture for me, but I have no concept of that, like no idea. So I'm just not very science minded, but it was so well researched. It was so well written. It was for the most part really engaging and it covers a whole variety of different topics like the clitoris, um, gender affirmation surgery, which I really, really love that section and hormones, all sorts of different things. And I, in general, I had a really good time. I'm trying to read one nonfiction a month for the year of 2024 because I noticed I read like almost no nonfiction last year. So yeah, I'm happy that I fulfilled that goal and it was, it was a really good book. Next, I read Mayfly by CJ Lead. I'm in love with this book. I'm not gonna say much about it here because in my 12 hour reading blog, I do go on for ages at the end about spoilery thoughts and why I love this. This is five stars for me. Like I'm obsessed. It's my new thing. Basically, this is about a girl named Mayfly. She lives in LA and this is an extreme horror. So things get pretty dark, but she works at California Adventure, which is like right next to Disneyland, if you didn't know. And she plays Elsa at the park and her best friend plays Anna. And Maeve has this really, really intense fear of being alone. And she has specific tendencies that are, you know, she's got some hobbies that aren't really mainstream. And <laughs> she knows that this darkness that's kind of in her sets her apart from a lot of other people. And she's got two people in her life that she feels like really get her, but she's sort of feeling like she could lose them at any moment. And she's just terrified for the time that will come when she's gonna be alone. And things go really crazy and off the walls. I love this book. It was a debut novel and I'm so excited for CJ Lee's other book. She has a deal for three books with Tor Nightfire. First was Mayfly. There's another one coming out in October or something at the end of this year. And then there should be another one, I think, next year. So really, really excited. This was a very hyped read for me. And I'm so happy that I enjoyed it as much as I did. The atmosphere was incredible. The writing was incredible. The plot was incredible. I felt like the pacing was really good. There were shocking moments. There were interesting themes being explored. It was so interesting as kind of a character study and I loved it. I loved it. So I am probably going to pre-order Leeds next book because I just, um, I need it like now. Give it to me now. Last but definitely not least because I I'm obsessed with this is Cranford by Elizabeth Gaskell. This book I also read for uni. I'm taking this class about Victorian literature and this is the first book we had to read and it's so good. Elizabeth Gaskell I've never read from before but she wrote North and South. I think that's probably her most popular work. This is obviously a classic and it's about the fictional town of Cranford in England and basically in Cranford, all these old women just live there and they don't like men and they don't trust men. And they're just like, we can do things on our own. 
It's a novel that celebrates domesticity and crafting and very, it's like small moments of joy. And I found it deeply funny and satirical and it was just so, so good. This is the sort of book where if you're looking for a real plot, okay, you're not really gonna get it but there is it is like how do i put it like it feels like nothing's happening sometimes but by the end you look back and you're like wow so much has happened so i don't know it just kind of does its own thing it's really quirky it's unique and i was cackling reading this what i loved about this was again the relationships between female characters that's kind of like a theme I guess for this month if we look at this and Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires. I mean that's not really a theme of Fishes 2 but let's roll with it. I love the relationship between the women in this book. It was funny because they're each very distinct and they each have their own ideas but they're all kind of similar in this way. The ladies of Cranford have like little codes that they always follow like you never go visit someone before noon. You have to be back in back in your house by like nine. Everyone's in bed by 10.30. It's like, there is a way things should be done and there's a way things should not be done and you have to follow it. But at the same time that they, that these ladies sort of criticize each other for maybe not following what another person is deemed socially acceptable behavior, they have so much love and grace for each other in very quiet kind of unassuming ways and it's really just about all these like snickety old ladies and it's so much fun and it's nostalgic and i i had the best time so there we go that is all the books that i read in january 2024 i'm really excited to continue discovering really good books. I'm really happy with the way that this month turned out. I'm, I feel like I read a good amount of books. I enjoyed a good amount of books. I mean, there were, there were a couple duds, but for the most part, I feel really positive. I'm in the mood to read and yeah, I'm just excited to continue reading and making videos. If you enjoyed this, give it a like if you feel like that. If you would like to subscribe, I mean, like, you can, no one's stopping you. So, yeah, if you want, that option is there. Also, let me know in the comments if you had any good books that you read this month. I want to know, like, your favorite, least favorite. Give me any sort of, like, I don't know, give me some hate about books that you hated this month. Give me some love about books you loved this month. Um, if you've read any of these books, maybe... Let me know what you thought about them. I would love to hear from you. And I will see you guys in a video very soon. Bye.